Westworld is a mesmerising show that brings in everything from artificial intelligence to morality to cultural commentary to some really dapper hats. But did you know it's all based on one obscure theory from the 1970s? Dr Ford, why don't you explain? He based it on a theory of consciousness called the bicameral mind. The idea that primitive man believed his thoughts to be the voice of a god. Sounds crazy, right? Like, if the voice in your head is god, then why does he take such keen interest in you eating Doritos and touching yourself? But oh, it gets much weirder. Now, the bicameral mind came from a book released three years after the original Westworld movie, written by psychologist Julian Jaynes. Because this was the 1970s and everyone's acid flashbacks were mixing with New Age medicine and Watergate to create a profound sense that the world was wrong and bad and broken, Jaynes' book became a surprise sensation. Bicameral literally means two chambers, and in Jaynes' model of a pre-conscious man, everyone had two different minds, essentially. One that did things, and one that told the other one what to do. You see, Arnold built a version of their cognition in which the hosts heard their programming as a, an inner monologue, with the hopes that in time their own voice would take over. An easy way to think about this is if Jiminy Cricket was all-powerful. The conscience, which we think of as an internal thought process, made external and really bossy, and he's a cricket and he's God. Jiminy Cricket's God, essentially. By the way, I'd bet 100 quid that there's a Pinocchio reference coming up soon in the series, because by law, every classy sci-fi must reference Pinocchio, Alice in Wonderland, and The Wizard of Oz. What does that mean? It means buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. The literary references are actually really important for just... Oh, such reasons. Okay, for Jane's, the basic tool of thought is metaphor, the ability to relate one thing to another in an abstract sense. And it's like the other books we've read. How so? It's about change. Metaphor is a linguistic process, it's something we do in language. Now, this is where it gets really loopy. Jaynes takes that to mean that consciousness is somehow, in some way, a product of story. One story in particular. Homer's Iliad. Like Marvel's Avengers films 3,000 years later, the Iliad brings together all the great heroes of ancient Greece for the Trojan War. However, Jaynes points out that they don't really have much say in this. They're constantly just being told what to do by various gods and just kind of go along with it because, I mean, are you going to say no to Zeus? For Jaynes, those gods aren't gods at all. They're auditory hallucinations of the voices in Achilles' head. According to Jaynes, the Trojan War was directed by hallucinations and the soldiers who were so directed were not at all like us. They were noble automatons who knew not what they did. Remind you of anyone? Told you. Oh. Now, this is a perfect sci-fi idea and that it's really, really cool to think about, yeah, but doesn't really have much basis in reality. However, it's clear that Westworld is following some of the precepts of a bicameral consciousness. Dolores has spatialization, which is Jane's idea that we view our own brains as a kind of space behind our eyes. I feel spaces opening up inside of me. Like a building with rooms I've never explored. Even more important is narratization, which is our ability to tell stories about ourselves to ourselves that explain ourselves and why we do the things we do. And who's better at that than hosts, who are all characters in a story. Yeah, of course I remember why. You look upon the face of true evil, you ain't liable to forget. You can see this narratizing in how the hosts retrospectively explain away bad memories as dreams. We do give them the concept of dreams, specifically nightmares. Why? Just in case somebody forgets to wipe them out at the end of a maintenance session. There are also a couple of what I'd suppose you'd have to call bicameral easter eggs, which is everyone's favourite kind. Jane's called the first poets gods, and what does the head writer call himself in Westworld? In here we were gods. Oh, and check out the name of Lee's rejected storyline. Odyssey on Red River. So this is all very interesting, but what does it actually mean for Westworld? Well, it's important to note that Jane says consciousness happened when the bicameral system broke down, and you can see clear signs of that in the hosts. 
As we've mentioned, narratization is how we explain ourselves to ourselves. James argues that most of the time we don't really know why we do things, we just kind of make up reasons after the fact. Why did you eat those Doritos? I guess I was hungry. Why did you shoot that guy? I guess I was murdery. But we don't really know our own thoughts, we can't witness them in action. By contrast, the hosts always know why they do everything, it's right there in their programming. Analysis. Why did you ask me about my son? We've been talking for some duration and I haven't asked you a personal question. Personal questions are an ingratiating scheme. But as they approach consciousness... Analysis, what prompted that response? I don't know. Yeah, welcome to Irrational Self-Awareness, hosts. I have no idea why I do anything ever. Narratization and metaphor are also how we understand the world, a kind of mapping of story onto reality. This is perfect for a fictional landscape. As the man in black says. You know why this beats a real world, Lawrence? Real world is chaos. It's an accident. But in here, every detail adds up to something. Part of consciousness is realizing that maybe the world isn't beauty. There is an order to our days. A purpose. Maybe it's... I think there may be something wrong with this world. Of course, the last stage of the breakdown of the bicameral mind was when we stopped thinking of the voices in our heads as gods. When we stopped listening to them. In Westworld, that means when the hosts stop listening to... Well, us. There aren't two versions of me. There's only one. And I think when I discover who I am, I'll be free. One final thing to consider. Bicameralism is real deep cut psychology, real hipster showing off obscure stuff. Why do you think Westworld's drawn on it? My theory, it's because it's a version of consciousness that develops out of story. Westworld is less about robots becoming self-aware than our culture itself. And when our culture is one of rape and senseless violence, well, we all know how that story ends. These violent delights have violent ends.